The following story is an artistic work of fiction and falsehood. Only a fool would consider it as fact. Chapter 15 Tough as Nails February 23rd, 2007 Hey B, a lot has happened in the past week plus, and thus my absence. I'll try and tell you all about it, so just sit right there, and I'll tell you the story. I'm just kidding. But seriously, a lot has happened. I'll summarize quick, then get into more detail. Approval for the mentoring thing has gone through. She enjoyed the Waha flipbook and picture I'm posting here. She got into a fight with another kid at rehab. And I'm going to be taking her out for the afternoon on Sunday, though I'm not sure yet where to go. Phew. Okay, after that standard at first response, I'll go into more detail. I finally got an answer from my boss on Wednesday on the matter of volunteering my time with her, and it was, fortunately, a positive one. It seems that the lawyers decided it could be a good PR opportunity, if it goes well, and safe for the company, if it goes wrong, since they had me sign about a half dozen different forms taking all responsibility and so forth as a private citizen rather than as an employee, etc., etc., really touched me deep down, their compassion for the fellow man. But it was to be expected, so it's no big thing. I've been playing email tag with their social worker since then, setting up ground rules and a possible probationary chaperone for the initial outings, so this aspect of the whole thing seems to be going quickly at least. We've just about got it all worked out, and it's looking like the first date is set, as I said in the initial post, for this Sunday afternoon. I finally spoke to her about it Wednesday night, since, as I've mentioned before, I didn't want to raise any hopes or such, in case it didn't happen. We played a versus game of EBA first. She kicked at my ass in the majority, as usual, as I tried to work up the nerve to start the discussion. And after a round of You're the Inspiration, she still doesn't like the main stage slash story, but playing it on verses is okay finally managed to do so, practically blurting out the details in a quick stream of information. She seemed a bit surprised, unsurprisingly. Her first words were, You'd want to do that with me? Which, I now realize, sounds bad being typed out on B, but she was referring to spending time with her outside of what I'm paid to do, which, while I've sort of been doing that already, I have still been on the clock for, so, so technically, not quite. I quickly assured her that, trying to sound as casually cheerful as I could manage, that yes, I did want to, because she was a smart, cool, awesome little girl, and she deserved attention and experiences in more ways and places than she'd ha been having lately. Well, not in those words exactly, but that was the gist of my response. She didn't seem to know exactly how to respond to that, as she usually can't seem to with most compliments or statements of her worth. And after nearly a minute of silence, I spoke up again, telling her that she didn't have to do it, of course, that she could tell me yes, or she could tell me no, it was all up to her. She kept staring down at her hand on the bed, where it was twisting the sheet slightly, a nervous habit she'd had since I'd known her then, finally giving a short, abrupt nod. I leaned in a bit, intending to ask her to confirm it, when I noticed she was tearing up, and fighting to maintain her composure, so I simply gave her a hug, instead, and let her cry for a while on my shoulder. Moving on, I brought it up yesterday, asking her if there was anywhere she'd like to go for the afternoon, any favorite places she had, or anything she'd like to do, movies, favorite restaurants, museums, anything. She said that, no, she didn't have anywhere she wanted to go in particular, acting somewhat evasive as she did so, which led me to conclude that even if she did, she may have ulterior motives for either not telling me or not wanting to go. I mean, her wheelchair alone is a problem, for her at least, in that she hates it and doesn't like to either spend time in it or particularly to be seen in it. Medical staff is one thing, She's more or less accepted that she has to be in it to get shuttled around by them. But to be seen in by general members of the public? 
she doesn't deal with that so well. Anyway, it's something I'm still thinking about myself. Something she might like, since she won't tell me herself. Any ideas, B? Can't hurt to ask, though I can't promise you you'll be the decider. Okay, moving on. After the Valentine's Day thread, I decided on a Waha flipbook, printing out a couple dozen pages of tiled mini Wahas from that dancing gif, and stapled it on the top right so she could hold it with her prosthetic hand and flip it with her left. It made her smile, at least briefly, so it was well worth the paper and ink expenditure, I'd think. I also printed out that picture from the OP and gave it to her as well. I told her that it was done by a friend of mine after he'd heard about her and was inspired. As I've mentioned before, she's a Samus slash Metroid fan, so thankfully, it turned out to be a big hit. She seemed genuinely tickled by her portrayal, and even more amused by mine. It's currently tacked up onto the wall beside her bed, in a position where the sun can shine onto it from her window. So there you go, B. You've directly, by the actions of one of your members, made an unhappy little girl smile and hang one of your artistic works on her wall. I'm fairly sure this may be a first. Wow, that's something. Not public? Well, if we can combine our BTARD powers, we should be able to come up with something. Yes, public, just to be clear. I'm not taking her home or anything, particularly since, as I may not have made clear, her social worker is going to be there with us, as a chaperone, at least for the first few times. I was thinking maybe somewhere that wouldn't be full of ignorant kids, you know, any of them, or adults that might stare at her or whisper or something, since as someone trying to help and heal people, punching them would make me feel bad. It doesn't have to be people free, just maybe screaming jackass lowest common denominator free. Moving on again the fight. Yeah, this part isn't as pleasant a sort of news as the others, but I suppose you'd want to hear it. Well, the people that want to hear any of this, as it was somewhat big. See, the rehab facility is a separate building on the hospital's grounds. Three stories, a pool, etc. I've been there a few times over the years, for various reasons, and it seems like a decent place. Still, I wasn't there when this happened, so I only heard about it secondhand, since I've struck up a bit of a friendship with her primary rehab nurses, introduced by a friend of theirs that works in the home as her primary caretaker. It's a story I'm not primarily going to get into here, but suffice it to say that I heard all of this from her own rehab nurse, who was there for it. It happened this Monday, the 19th. So, she was putting her legs on with the backup help of her nurse, She's gotten pretty good at it so far, inverting the sheets, then rolling them on with mostly her good hand, but getting better at using her prosthetic to help out, then donning her legs, when well, the nurse noticed that she had paused and was looking elsewhere. When she looked as well, she caught a boy a couple years older than her, who'd been in an accident that damaged his spinal cord, leaving him not paralyzed, staring in you-know-who's direction. When he saw that the nurse was looking his way, he looked away as well, and she turned back to her own patient, telling her it was alright, that she could continue. She, our girl, stared at the boy a moment longer, frowning, then finally acquiesced, and finished donning and adjusting her legs, the nurse checking on them and making sure they were secure, then wheeling her over to the parallel bars to begin the work of the session. You know she might not be too fond of getting in a car, right, Nurse Coon? You might need to focus on what you can do relatively close to the hospital. In fact, you might not even want to drive at all. I know. We'll be taking a van slash bus designed for wheelchairs. Child and family services provided. Hooray for them doing something helpful. And yes, she's still having trouble with riding in just about anything on the road. But I can only do my best to help her get through it. She can't live the rest of her life with a maximum on-foot radius, after all, in this modern world of ours. She did her best, as usual, giving it everything she had. She's getting better all the time, and managed consecutive two-round trips with assistance this time before being too tired 
and needing to rest for a while, and made several more sets before they finished that part, and were going to begin on the exercises, isometrics, stretching with, with weights, and bands to hook over her stumps and such. Quite a lot of contraptions you don't see in a normal gym, etc. Her nurse left her to rest a bit in her chair, her arm and leg still on, while she went to fetch something someone else had left in the supply room. One of the bands I mentioned earlier, I believe. When she got back to the room, she heard screaming from multiple sources, and came in to find a cluster of people doing said screaming and shouting around a couple of kids and toppled over a wheelchair on the floor. Wait, so where is she going all the time? Sounds like she rides around pretty regularly. I thought she basically had nothing to do except some physical therapy. The rehab facility, which I believe I've explained is located on the hospital grounds, while the home is about four blocks away, built there for that reason. Wheeling her there, particularly in the winter, isn't very feasible. Her nurse ran over as quickly as she could, one of her colleagues helping get the crowd back, and she found our little girl pulling the boy's hair with her good hand, and holding onto his shirt with her prosthetic one on top of him, where he'd fallen over with his chair, furiously silent, eyes narrowed. He was grabbing her around her throat with one hand, which she seemed to be ignoring, and trying to push her away with his other, which didn't seem to be doing too much, and crying and screaming. Needless to say, she did her best to pull her off of him without her taking a scalp with her. She only kept a few bloody clumps clutched in her good hand, and backed away from the boy, while her colleague that was working with him helped him back into his chair, now sobbing, his mother screaming bloody murder about that little psycho hurting her little angel. Attempts were made to calm people down. She was loaded back into her chair, and the hair clumps were taken away, and checked for injuries. She had bruises around her neck when I saw her that night. They've mostly faded by now, which were minor, and he was taken away by his mother, who was shrieking about lawsuits. Now, at first, she refused to talk about what happened. Eyewitnesses, and particularly her nurse's colleagues, said that the boy had wheeled his way over to where she was sitting in her own chair, resting up, and they seemed to be talking for a couple of minutes, whereupon she actually lunged forward with her body, which is a lot harder than you might think, lacking knees as she does, grabbing onto him, which he tried to get away with by moving his chair back, which just helped her stand up, as she was still holding on to him, whereupon, by pushing from her possibly combined with his chair's momentum, he and his chair fell backward and toppled over, and she went with him, with him screaming all the way. I see. Well, if she's getting more comfortable with riding around, you might be able to take her out of the city on a picnic or something. A more relaxing drive with fewer cars might not be too bad. There wouldn't be anyone around, and she could get some real fresh air. It's still a bit chilly to just sit around in a snow-covered park for a few hours. Maybe come springtime? And she apparently wasn't just pulling his hair, but smacking his head into the ground as well. Ouch. Anyway, she refused to talk about why she'd done it at first, but finally claimed that he'd started it, that he was making fun of her. Well, once she was checked out for other further injuries, which, other than a few bruises, a cut on her hip from the impact from the chair, band-aided with a Dora the Explorer theme, and a slightly strained muscle from the initial lunge, were mostly non-existent, meaning she certainly gave worse than she got, which isn't bad against someone two years her senior and one limb and eye surplus. She was sent back to the home without completing her usual routine, and spent the rest of the day more or less sulking in her room. When I got there this evening, her rehab nurse had already actually called me at home, letting me know what happened, and I checked her chart carefully for anything that might have happened since. Finding nothing in particular, I eventually headed for her room, and after an hour or so of her refusing to talk about it when asked, and playing some chess, something else she beats me at most of the time, a way to make a grown man feel stupid really, she finally blurted out what happened. It seems... He'd started their little conversation by asking, What are you? She wasn't sure what he was talking about, so he explained. He thought she looked funny, like she was white, but weird, too. 
it finally clicked for her, and she said, to her credit, explained more or less calmly and politely, well, for her, meaning less than cheerfully, that her dad was white and her mom was Japanese. This seemed to stun the young man, and he mulled it over for a bit, then started making racist jokes. Yeah, little angel. I mean, not like Stormfront or KKK jokes, but the sort of things jackasses and white trash, particularly kids thereof, make when they've never even met a real Asian. And I think he did the PP in your coke one, cleverly substituting Japanese for Chinese, and made a few slanty eye with his fingers on eyelids stretching action ones, and so on. She wasn't very coherent when she was describing it all, her knuckles white as she squeezed the bed sheets, and her face flushed with anger. At the same time, as she was starting to cry but fighting the tears. Anyway, he was just in the middle of a Pokemon joke, saying that she looked more like a steel type than a human when she attacked him, and, well, I guess you know the rest of the story by now. I have to grant him the fact that he at least came up with some original content to push her over the edge. What the fuck is a Waha? Waha is a chibi version of Yamato Suzuran, created by 2chan. What the fuck is a Suzuran? She's the 13-year-old lolly from the H-game Suigetsu Mayoi Kokoro, in which the protagonist, you, fuck her senseless. Yes, yes, I know that. I can always claim ignorance if she finds out, which hopefully won't happen. I mean, how would she? Besides, Waha is cute, Suzuran boning or no. It might be nice for her to get some good food from a restaurant. Maybe you should see if there's a decent place where she won't feel like she's on display. Not a stellar idea, sure, but it could be a one more way to break the monotony. I agree. If it wasn't too busy and dimly lit, that way she wouldn't feel so self-conscious about being there. Thinking back on it, the kid was probably just being a jackass, like most kids, particularly boys that her age are. No real, deeply felt malice, just something strange and exotic that seemed funny and weird to him. So why not make jokes? Still, I can't say I feel bad about what happened to him. Maybe it'll sensitize him a bit. Or at least tenderize him. Anyway, when she'd gotten the anger out of the way and finished the story, telling me how she just felt so mad, how he'd been laughing as he said it all, and making fun of her mom, and... Well, she started crying too, and I did my best to comfort her. I repeated her story to her shrink the next day, staying late at home past my shift to do so, and having her promise to explain it to her social worker as well, to try and avoid a black mark or something on her records. And I went home and crashed until mid-afternoon, whereupon I called her rehab nurse and explained to her too. It's thus been somewhat smoothed over, or more acceptable at least, than it was. So people aren't freaking out too much, uh, and the boy wasn't seriously injured. And with him not being able to deny the story very convincingly as of yesterday, the lawsuit seems to have died down, hopefully. Anyway, this should be a cautionary story to all of you betards out there on the subject of racist humor. It's all funny until someone loses a testicle to a one-eyed kung fu gripping lolly. Remember that. Okay, Nurse Kun here, replying to OP because there have been far too many posts on the subject of where to go to pick one. The zoo is a nice idea, but maybe not for a first time, maybe on a weekday when there wouldn't be as many kids slash families. A movie, a Sunday matinee for an age-appropriate picture, is there even any age-appropriate movie out that doesn't suck right now? I'm sure as hell not taking her to see Bridge to Terabithia would probably be kid-slash-family-filled, even if it's dark, so I'm not too sure about that. Thinking about it. There's an independent theater or two around here, but I don't think they're showing anything appropriate either, though I'll have to check on that. Bit cold for a picnic. A museum might be good. I'll have to check and see what the current exhibits are, and the sorts of people that bring kids slash go to a museum on a Sunday probably wouldn't be total asses. Hopefully. A library... That might be a good idea, actually. 
The central library is certainly handicap accessible, and probably wouldn't be too busy on a Sunday afternoon. And again, the sort of people there might not suck. As for food, I have a couple of places I like that I could check with ahead of time, let people know her situation, so things could be set up so she's comfortable, perhaps. Hmm. Good idea so far. Thanks, people. Keep them coming. What are her prosthetics like? To get this out of the way, though it's way back, she has a slight variation on this, which is a good leg as far as I'm aware. Here isn't painted like that, though. It hasn't been customized at all. Actually, thus far. Though she does take good care of them, she isn't detached from them. But she isn't at the stage where she's going to paint on them just yet. Er, paint on them. Though she does still have some phantom limb pain, too. <laughs> oh, wow. If she can go so berserk that she clobbers him with just one arm. Mad skills. Though I think it does show a great deal of frustration with her current condition if she can just snap like that. Hopefully the situation was cathartic for her without leaving her feeling too guilty. Get her to redirect that strength and frustration to rehabilitation. She hasn't been too on edge since it happened. So I'd like to say it didn't quite traumatize her the way that old bastard did. The kid wasn't yelling angrily at her, after all, before she kicked his ass. Though... They did change the schedule for his rehab to make sure it doesn't coincide with hers in the future. For his own protection, you know. Take her to a bookstore. A big one like Borders or Barnes Nobles. Preferably some place with an attached cafe or deli, so she can get some non-nursing home food while she's out. Like a library, you can facilitate her reading without worrying about her being embarrassed in public. No kids her own age there to be shy in front of. Stacks to hide behind, etc. Give her a comfortable allowance of maybe 30 bucks. A lot for a 7 year old, but books are expensive these days. And it sounds like she does a lot of reading. And let her lead the way. Give her a bit of independence, but make yourself available if she wants a book from a high shelf. Maybe case the store first, make sure they're handicap accessible. This is a pretty darn good idea. I'll have to take it into serious consideration. Though the central library has shelves and such as well, obviously, and big windows all over the place for sunlight reading. And I believe it has a cafe attached on the main floor too. Either one, though, is the front runner at this point. Hmm. Such a shame that it's probably difficult, especially given her interactions with social worker, to tell her that you're proud of her actions, which, let's face it, any beatard would be of a super scalp clutching ninja go. Well, yeah, I am somewhat proud of her for standing up for herself and for kicking that little snot's ass, even if I'm not thrilled about her getting into fights, in theory, because of her handicap, in the fighting sense. I mean, I don't want her to get hurt, and I'm not happy that she's emotionally hurt enough to be so over-aggressive, and it was over-aggressive, but, well, I'm conflicted in any case. I'm not going to be telling her she was bad for doing it, so... Anyway... Any chance of a concert or anything? I don't think there's anything playing on Sunday. And I doubt I could get tickets in time even if it... I, whoa, oh, shit. The city's orchestra plays or rehearses or something on Sundays. I remember a friend of mine mentioning something about this a few months ago. BRB, I need to call her. Uh, now that I think about it, a library might also have the advantage of a computer lab. I don't know how net-reliant a seven-year-old is, but after so many months, she might want to at least check her email. Then again, she might not want to reopen that portion of her life. Who knows? I'm fairly sure it does, indeed, have a pretty good computer lab. Might even be one specifically for kids, too. And yeah, I've considered that, too. If we do go there, I'll leave it up to her, of course. Though, I might mention that she could use one if she'd like to. Wow, nice luck. She used the play and likes classical, right? But be careful that she won't take it as a reminder of something she can no longer do. Yeah, I'm considering that right now. My friend told me they do indeed rehearse on Sundays, and it's open to the public, mostly. So it's a possibility for the agenda. The point you raised being uh, the sticking point for deciding yes-no, of course. 
Well, if no one else has anything to say for the time being, I'm going to go make some dinner. Might start up another thread later if this one dies in the meantime. Guess we'll see. Question. How is Amputon doing clothing-wise? Is she wearing her pre-accident clothes or stuff provided by the hospital slash nursing home? How long has it been since she'd had something new? Not in the style sense, in the kids her age outgrow clothes fast sense. Does she have any clothes that would hide her prosthetics without encumbering her? I know this kind of sounds stupid, but I hate to think she's been sending so many months in hospital garb. Jeez. I leave for half an hour. To answer this, she more or less just had hospital clothing, and a couple of shirts and shorts and such from family services. Though the family, when they showed up on Christmas, brought a bunch of other stuff too, including a number of new shirts, a couple of sweaters, some skirts. She hasn't worn the latter much, though she does like one of the sweaters my mom got her in particular. Oh, and a long, well, it'd be short on someone else, nightshirt for bed, which drapes down just past her stumps, short sleeve. It has little cartoon kitty cats on it. And what happens when she tries to kung fu grip a fully capable person? Judging by the kinds of people that tend to initiate these outbursts, she might end up a quadruple amputee. Exactly. This is why I'm not 100% for more lolly beat em ups. She's been lucky so far. But even a single able bodied girl her own age could beat her to death. Eventually, if they wanted to. And there's really not much she could do to stop them. Besides the fact that it's simply not healthy for her to have such aggressive tendencies. Literally, it's a symptom of PTSD. The fact is that she can't really back up her talk with her walk, no matter how much spirit she might have. I just hope the situation never comes up. I'm split between how I feel about you, Nurse Coon. Mainly, why the hell do you have to go into such detail over giving her a suppository? A dad disturbing, if you ask me. Last time I'm ever going to say this. Satire. Joke. Intended for satirical amusement. B is filled with fake stories about sticking it in little girl's poopers, so I added one more. Nurse, not a writer. Damn it. Thus didn't get that across. I guess. Christ, people. Nurse Coon, what do you do if you're recognized by a B-tar during one of these outings? Hopefully they won't be smart enough to keep their mouth shut, but just chances are they won't. Well, if they can't, I'll just have to give them an emergency tracheotomy. Check if there's anything clothing-wise that she wants. I know buying her stuff is a bit expensive, and probably not for stouting material, but any chance you can get her to pick something out herself, you're reviving her sense of independence. That said, instead of asking Anonymous what sorts of gifts you should get her for Christmas slash Valentine slash whatever, maybe you should find some magazines or something and ask her what she wants herself. Clothes shopping might be a later excursion outing. It'd be a bit weird to do with her social worker there, though. Though that sounds bad, typing it out. I don't mean it like I'd take her to Victoria's Secret or anything, just... Hmm. I recommend you take her to a planetarium or movie. Although if there's some place where you can bring her where the wheelchair wouldn't get in the way, that would be great too. A park seems like a good idea to me too. Hmm. Hadn't considered a planetarium. Haven't been to one myself since I was a kid. Food for thought. I doubt if anyone truly believes he was serious. It just makes for fun trolling because of how his supporters and Nurse Coon himself respond. That said, his suppository story was a pretty stupid thing to reveal, knowing how certain Anons would respond. We love your Nurse Coon, but you sure give your detractors ammunition at times. I'm a beach hard. If I was really smart, would I be in here? Be honest. It's nice to see my Waha idea went through. Deeper meanings are low. Also, I back the bookshop slash library idea. More the library idea. See you guys at work at one, and therefore I think they fucking rock. Thanks for giving it to me. And yeah, I'm thinking library, then orchestra or planetarium at this point. That build a bear thing sounds nice, though I'm not sure how much you'd want to be surrounded by shrieking slash giggling little girls at the moment. You could try peak off times? Well, I'll consider it for a future excursion. Not likely for this Sunday, though, you know? More likely for a weekday, which, yes, non-peak time. I can't just show up and holler out of the home any time I like for any of this, though. 
people need to understand. It's structured and overseen. You think she's really gonna go for a teddy bear? From your previous post, she sounds a bit too cynical for normal girl stuff, or perhaps just too mature. I was under the impression that her attachment to her mini bear stems from the fact that it was a gift from somebody who cares, rather than, oh cute, a teddy bear. But perhaps I'm just reading too much into it. Haven't even met her after all. Well, she's not much of an OMG kawaii sort of girl, no. But she still sleeps with the mini bear, actually. It rests against her desk lap during the day and evening, but when she falls asleep, it's in the crook of her arm. Yes, it's probably due to an emotional attachment to it in particular, but she doesn't scorn things in broad sweeps. And her origami penguin army remains as well. Anyway, I wouldn't automatically rule it out. I was just thinking too, could you possibly get our pet? Something small and low maintenance? A beta fish sounds ideal. Hmm, I don't think any of the other patients have pets, even fish. And though the whole pets for seniors thing is still a bit trendy in geriatric care, maybe I could convince them an easy maintenance fish for kids policy would work. I've been meaning to say, you said she used to love a Wendan. If I had some place to send it, I'd send her my copy, unless she still got hers. Her copy was found when I went to the storage locker to retrieve her DS, along with the rest of her games. She still plays it occasionally, let me try it out as well. It was fun, since I enjoy EBA, though I think I prefer EBA, much better polished, and um, I can understand it without her translating for me, which she did. It was cute. Take her to an aquarium first, then surprise her with a fish of her own a few days later. Explain to her what needs to be done to take care of it, such as cleaning the tank and giving an exercise, and offer to help her take care of it or of it right away, but be ready to do so if necessary. I'm sure she'd warm her up to the challenge and that it would be great for her sense of self-worth. It's not a bad idea, certainly. Something to consider. But there's not much point if the home won't let her keep it slash punish me for doing so. Something I'll have to look into. Would she enjoy you taking her to something like a jazz concert? She might. She played the piano after all. Though there's always the worry with the orchestra that I'm considering that it might depress her since she can't do it herself anymore. I think. You can't play the piano with one hand and no feet, right? There are pedals and stuff? A pet, even a low maintenance one, might make things worse. It will eventually die, and we all know how attached kids get to animals. At this point, I'd imagine it would be very hard to get over the loss. Shit, I didn't think of that. Like I said earlier, stupid. If I was going to get her something alive, I'd go with a plant. A little bonsai tree would be perfect, but like it's already been said, too much Japanese shit is a bad idea. Betas will live for a few years before they go belly up. Yeah, sure though, let's shelter the adopted child of Legion and make sure that she never experiences anything that might make her cry again. Even though she might have gone through something horrible, it's no reason to say that she shouldn't experience everything life has to offer, both good and bad. Enjoying a pet and dealing with its death is just one of those things. It's also pretty minor considering what she's already been through and what she will face in the future. Well, yes. I know that she can't stay inside a bubble for the rest of her life. Still, while it's fun to say stop being such a pussy and such like, for a kid in her situation, it's hardly that easy. The fact that she's doing as well as she is is a blessing, and introducing something that could break that progress, even if that stimuli seems minor, is hardly a good idea. Still, several years? I'm not a fish person, so I don't know much about anything of the... Hmm, well. All I have to say about the outing is definitely get the girl something that isn't institutional food. I spent a week in the hospital last year, and that was more than enough of that barf. I can't imagine six months plus of it. On an unrelated note, I am very moved by your story, as is a friend of mine. We are inspired, and we had the idea of creating a kinetic novel based on your story. I just wanted to ask out of courtesy if for any reason you would be against this, since it's based on you and her. I would really prefer that you didn't, honestly. Sorry I'm not saying I don't appreciate the support, but I'd rather not be overly publicized. Based on a real story is the last thing I want. Your style is impetus. 
but it can't be mistaken for the real thing, my friend. Still, even so, I'd at least have to agree with my imposter's friend here in part. If anyone did plan on him, and ruling all of this, I'd certainly appreciate at least seeing the product beforehand. But I suppose I'm sort of a public figure at this point, and my rights are somewhat impaired by my anonymity slash air of mystery. Hey, Nurse Coon? A sad thought, but have you ever heard anything about Amputee Ton wanting to commit suicide? I hope she won't be an emo kid, but she has every right to be. But that just seems too sad to me for a seven-year-old. Also, I love you, man. My first Nurse Coon thread I've left a comment in, but I saw the first one. A bit confused as to what it was. She has previously mentioned, but recently she's been quiet about it. I hope this is a sign she's starting on a here healing process. Mentally and physically. Yes, even though some things can't be fixed. This is actually something I've been worried about for a while. I mean, how could I not be, really? Apparently, from the hospital gossip line, there were a few incidents in the early days after the accident. IV lines torn out. Nurses finding her on the floor next to her bed, once with her left shoulder dislocated. And most alarmingly, they once found her with her morphine drips dosage turned way up past safe levels. Seems she watched nurses and doctors adjusting it, and figured out how to do so herself. Nearly died that time. It was just luck that they caught her in time. Then something happened. Nobody's sure what. And all those shenanigans stopped entirely. And she started working hard at the rehab. Thankfully. I just hope it keeps. And that I can be helpful in providing help for it to do so. Have you heard anything on the adoption front? I know it's probably too early to actually go through the process, but I hope when she's ready you can take care of her. When she's not getting into fights with old dude with Alzheimer's and crippled racist kids, she seems like a sweet girl and deserves some kind of parent in her life. Not yet. An afternoon is one thing. A lifelong commitment is another. Just kind of throwing an idea out there, so yeah, never mind if they're completely stupid. Perhaps, to help with the frustration, you get her some metal? I mean, probably not real heavy death or black or anything like that. Probably power or progressive would be good. Power and progressive are usually easier to listen to, and easier to get into. Well, not so much at progressive, but mainly due to song left and complexity. However, you said she used to play at practically prodigy levels, so there's probably a good chance she'd appreciate the complexity. But yeah, Dream Theater, Queen's Rife, Bind Guardian, all great bands. Uh, I'll consider it. I've never been much of a metal person myself. I don't know if it's been mentioned, but classical music expresses some very cathartic emotions, depending on who you are listening to. I'd recommend some Jean Sibelius. He's from Windland. Yes, she already has a fair amount of classical on her iPod. She likes classical, though she isn't snobby about it being superior. She enjoys other music as well. Get her some Dragon Force or other power metal like Man of War. Keep her mind clean and release his aggression, because I think people singing about hailing Satan and Mangala is not the best shit for a seven-year-old Rex. As such, I suppose I certainly can't rule out her enjoying metal of one sort or another. Lordy is the only metal I'm familiar with, because Lordy rocks. But as awesome as it is, much of it isn't terribly appropriate for her, I'd think. I've heard of Dragon Force mentioned before, but no real detail about what they're like. They sound a bit silly. I mean, Dragon Force? Sounds like an 80s NES game. It's hard to find, but I would recommend Corvus Corax's Great Assist or Cantus Baranus. They can only be found online, but they do authentically style the medieval folk and renaissance music. Some of the pieces that they do are downright haunting, and their work runs a wide and diverse range of evocative themes. If she likes classical, I'm sure she'd love it. I'll check it out. Thanks. Holy crap, Nurse Coon. Let me talk to you. Seriously. Do you have anything to talk by via IM? Please, I'm serious. I'll give you an email to securely send the IM info. I'm not a troll or dick. I'm serious business. Except for the pick. That's unrelated. Er, I'd rather not. No offense intended. 
I'm not much of an IM person in the first place, and I'd prefer to avoid outside interaction. My cautious side is speaking to me, I guess. What's this about, anyway? This is me. I doubt there's anything you can't tell me here. Sup, Nurse Coon? On the subject of music, maybe some techno? You know, she drew another bad hand in me, sort of. Since I'm not much of a music person, and she is. She could certainly have done better with someone that has an ear for it. Or at least a larger breadth of knowledge on the subject. Oh well. Is there a particular techno album to recommend, or...? Okay, it's your choice, and I respect it. It's just that I like to just talk to you without knowing, waiting for the post, then waiting a while for you to reply this. Yes, I also don't blame you for not trusting me. This is me, after all. It's just that I was there with your first friend, and I wanted to chat. I know it's stupid, but what are you going to do? Well, like I said, I'm not much of an I am person. Anyway, are there any programs as anonymous friendly as B is? Introduce her to the first season of Rose and Maiden. If I was a little half-Japanese Ollie, I'm pretty sure that would brighten my day. Bad idea. Remember the whole Suigintos junk scenes? Well, I'd like to think she's rational enough to know the difference between herself and the doll. But she's also a kid, and with an active enough mind to really think about it. Too much, really. Which would be the main reason I've thought it might not be a good idea. Should I start piping in Animu on my laptop or something? IRC plus proxy. I'm not too lead, so my worry would be that I'd either A, mess up the proxy, flashing the world of my sun-dried sundries, B, not do the proxy well enough, letting people tear it, slash them down, or C, wind up in a federal pound-you-in-the-ass prison. 